Hi, welcome back to Open Hand Farm. Today you have caught me in the middle of a project. This is the third installment of the laundry room slash butler pantry project. And we've already done two walls of the room. Today we're going to work on this wall. As you can tell up there, the painting stops there and the painting stops there. So I have this wall to do and then this wall is going to house a special item and you'll see what that is later. But for now, we just got to get this painted. That way the whole room will be done. As I sit here editing this video, I know some of you are going to say, don't paint that vent. I considered it. I decided when I started the project, I was going to take the vent down, buy a new white vent and put it up. But as I kept working, I thought, you know, What's going to happen is from the family room or the kitchen, somebody's going to glance into that room and the first thing they're going to see is a white vent up on top of the wall. So to prove this point, I put a piece of white paper over the vent and kept moving from different spots in the room. And I even started my eyes down at the bottom and I kind of looked at the um, cabinet on the other side of the wall and I kind of worked my way around but immediately my eyes just went to that white paper. So I decided to go ahead and paint it for now. It had previously been painted and as you'll see up by my chimney the other vents in the house are painted also. So I just went ahead and did it. When we started this project, there were a whole bunch of like stacking tower drawers and stuff that were shoved in here. One of them was empty, but I knew I wanted to use it for something for this room. And so part of doing this last wall was going through those drawers and reorganizing them. I had collected quite a few first aid kit items and I had them stored in two or three different places and they were a mess. I never knew where anything was. <laughs> so I knew that that smaller tower I wanted to use to put first aid in. So I did that and it was a process to go gather up everything, sort through things, decide what I wanted to keep and not keep but the job got done. So now I have the two towers in the laundry room on the wall they're going to be sitting on and they are ready for the final step of this room. They're sitting here next to my flower bin. This one is the first aid. I need to make new labels because I had used these in my sewing room, but everything is organized and good to go. If I need it, I know where to find it. And then this one houses my rags to be used for cleaning or baby faces or whatever. My dish rags that I use and then just assorted things in the bottom drawer. So I'm really, really excited for the next step on this wall. I also went through these two bottom drawers were just totally full of lids. So this one is now my gallon jar lids and all of my regular mouth jar lids. And this one is all wide mouth jar lids and a random juicer because it wouldn't fit in another drawer. I still need to clean these drawers out and then I will label them also.
today we're looking at the floor. <laughs> we're trying to figure out how we want to lay out the countertop that we're gonna put in here. And we definitely needed to curve it. So we just laid out some Christmas wrapping paper, folded it in to where we think we can still use the door without bumping ourselves on the tabletop. And Mark has drawn in the legs here and over there and then a support that'll come across here. I went through here with my mom's walker to make sure that she can still get through there okay. And you probably see all of this stuff over here. Well, this will all go under this counter. So all of that floor space will be available too. I'm so excited about this. I came up with this idea probably four or five months ago and everything's just kind of pushed it back. And once we pulled the washing machine and dryer out and got that well done, then it just kept rolling. I'm so glad. This is gonna be my extra workspace so I don't have to take my mixer in and out of the closet anymore or my food processor in and out of a cabinet. I can set those back there and use them. We also have a Berkey water filter that we've never used. And it's gonna sit right here so I'll have my water and my flour to feed my sourdough. It will be amazing. At eight foot four by four, I measured 37 and a quarter inches from that end, and 37 and a quarter inches from that end. We'll chop both of those and we should get very even legs. Here's the countertop. Still need to do some sanding. So he's laying out the framework. He had to go get some more short screws, although he's doing pocket screws in the corner. So that's very nice. We've jigsaw cut the edge and now it just needs to be sanded really well. And we got some iron-on veneer for the edges so that I can stain them because edges of plywood is not pretty. But I have plywood edges in other places and if you gotta, you gotta. But on this one, we decided to spend just a little extra to get the iron-on for the edge. Never seen a Craig jig in action. Here it goes. Now the screws will go down in these holes into the next board and you won't see anything. This is the frame that the tabletop will sit on. These pieces were a little tricky to cut the corners, but that's okay. I was able to kind of fill in with some putty and I'll just sand it down. It'll be great. This is the top. Over here, I got it all sanded down and I'm going to stain the top and the legs are being painted. And now we'll go upstairs and see which stain I think will go better with the already stained items up there. I've been painting table legs and the frame and still need to stain the top. Mark has done a great job planning this out. This went so smoothly, even on the corners that even after sanding, we're still a little wonky, but it worked. And we didn't do too bad for beginners. We got the edging on. Now we just have to trim it. It's overlaid at the top and at the bottom. We have this cutter that goes around the whole thing and trims that. Oh, 
Oh, you guys, this looks so nice. It just looks like a piece of nice board. I kind of beveled the edge a little bit. I don't know if you can tell. Now I just need to stain it. Okay, I thought I knew that I was going to be using this color on the tabletop, but I remembered that I have in the past used this folk art home decor antique wax and I add water to it and turn it into a stain and it is more the color of the kitchen cabinets and the big post like this that's in the kitchen area. So I tried it instead and I think I'm going to go with this. If I don't like this then I can go over it with this all right here we go oh that's pretty I like it. And this is a water base and I'm going to use a water base polyurethane over it. So I really like that too. Can you see that edge? It's staining so nicely. I'm going to let that soak in a little bit where the wood was a little bit split on the very top surface so we're gonna let that sit and soak in that might just have to be art imperfection guys and that's all right this was definitely a learning curve. We've never done anything with curves and <laughs> I guess it's definitely a learning curve, huh? Um, and then with the iron-on edging and stuff like that. So we learned a lot. Now, I did want to say that I went ahead and mixed up enough of this stain mixture so that I would have enough to cover the table. I didn't want to have to try to replicate what color I used um, halfway through. So make sure you have enough mix before you start. Legs back. And words are showing. Right. Words are showing. Okay. And this is the back. All right. Back right, and this is the back. All right, you guys, we're gonna flip it over. Let's see what it looks like. Look, I have counter space. We're gonna see how sturdy it is. See if I feel good about 
working on it. Yeah. It rocks a little bit. But I'm going to put my mixer and stuff on here so it'd be really sturdy for that. I think we're good. Are you ready for this? I'm going to show you the completed room. Here it goes. Isn't that exciting? Let me remind you what it looked like before. Yeah. <laughs> so things that we added, this countertop. This will house my mixer, my sourdough starter, things that I don't have out right now or i have them on a cabinet that i really don't have room for in the kitchen and they get in my way so now i have a place for them i had straightened up these drawers and they all fit underneath there now the goal is to make curtains to come across here so that is the next step we moved this cabinet from this wall. We painted all the walls. Now, remember, I wasn't going to have room for my clothing baskets, which you can see I've got this all pretty well full. And there, I could have set on my guests just in the floor here, but I didn't want to. So I got the folding ones that are right there so easy to get to and we moved the refrigerator back there when we started this project i told you we did not have a budget of like a thousand dollars or something like that we wanted to just do it for as little as possible so i want to tell you what we spent the table we did not need the whole sheet of plywood. We only needed part of it, but we had to buy it. So the table total cost was $110. So that's our big expenditure. The paint was $35. The laundry baskets, which were not like absolutely vital, but they make a huge difference. They were $50. That was a big expense for that, but I just felt like it was worth it. So everything else was something we already had. So our total was... So what I wanna do is next Sunday, instead of us having a video up, we're going to have a live. And during that live, I'm gonna show you everything else that we put in this room to make it more functional and useful for the purpose. I'm also gonna tell you the name we're gonna call the room, but I want you to come to the live and bring your own name. What should we call this room? I've been calling it a laundry room dash butler's pantry. I don't want to call it that. I have a name in mind. I kind of looked up that kind of thing. But if you have a creative name for this, I'm going to have a $25 Visa gift card for the name we choose if we like your name better than ours. So come with an idea and I can't wait to see you. Until next Sunday on the live, blessings to you and yours.